Hi, I'm Doug Lacey and here we are again uh, showing another part of the parabolic stress scan construction process. Today we're going to go over the composite mix design and uh, before we start the mixer I better talk about it a little bit because you won't be able to hear much. Uh, we're going to start out with two full buckets of sand and pretty fine sand, lots of fines in there. And a, a quick test kind of thing that we do is if you shake it, uh, you got about, about half large rounded or largest rounded pebbles and then we're going to put in start out with two buckets of sand uh, a bag of Portland cement and then we'll add the two and a half gallons of water that we already have measured out here in this bucket and, uh, and then we're going to put the 16 to 20 ounces about 18 ounces of Yukon SPJ this is the magic water reducer makes it all possible we're going to let it mix for a little while at that point, adding a very little tiny bit of water, but that point is where you want to be very patient and we want to see this, this Yukon SPJ do its thing, turn it into a kind of a, a lava looking texture and then we know it's, it's safe to go to the next step and add the half a bag of Micron 3, which will be about 12 and a half pounds. As long as we get above 12 and a half percent uh, cementus, we'll, we're doing pretty good. And that really makes the, uh, the mix get a lot much more loose without adding very much water, just little tiny bits of mist water. We've timed it, we've calibrated this spray thing so that we know we've got about uh, four seconds to create a quart of water. So at that two and a half gallons, we're hoping only to use for our spray mixing uh, about another quart of water to help bring it in. And, and again, we try to be really sparingly with the water. And the idea here is, because you don't really know how much water is in the sand, uh, you don't know what other conditions might affect the moisture, but to try to use as little water as possible to create a nice plaster. And then uh, after we do that, we're going to mix up some foam and put the foam in at the last thing. Oh, two more buckets of sand. And of course, we're going to put in the uh, PVA fibers, the REC 15, and the Fortiferro fibers, the three quarter inch. And uh, so, real quick, a recap on that. It's going to be start out with two buckets of sand, one bag of Portland, then we add the two and a half gallons of water, then we add the 16 uh, ounces of Yukon SPJ, then we wait. Then we add the micron, half a bag of Micron 3. And then after that, we have a really rich mix, and then that the, uh, has a lot of the fly ash in there. That's when I like to add the fibers, because they get dispersed, and there's very low friction at that point, and everything's really soupy. And then we add the final two buckets of sand, and uh, then we end up with three cubic feet of about a 16,000 PSI mix. And then at the very end, of course, we add the Merle Cell foam, which we whip that up with the drill over there. And we'll do all that real quick. This is a nine cubic feet horizontal paddle mixer. Also known as a mortar mixer. gallons of water. I'll go ahead and use up a little shot of water here. As you can see, it's starting to do some of the of the water reducer action. It's starting to ball up and do a little bit. But we have to, at this point, this is the only part in the mix that we have to wait and be patient. And until it turns into a kind of a soupy lava ship, which today it's been going pretty fast. But before I do anything, I'm just going to give it a good minute. 
Now you can see it's starting to turn into a, you're starting to see that resin starting to act. It's turning into a little bit of lava. And at this point, it's going to be very responsive to little tiny bits of water. So that's why it's a really good idea to resist the temptation to add water when you have that drier looking cement. And now, it, if we waited, it could get better. Uh, but I know that right now it'll respond to a very small amount of water and we're still well under our, the quart we allotted for uh, mixing water. Now you can see the, uh, the consistency is looking kind of granular, so, but it's, it's flowing very well, so that indicates that most of the cement has mixed and reacted and it just has a little bit to go to get, it'll get a little bit creamier. Still haven't added that water, it looks like just waiting paid off there. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, since it looks like it's responding and most of the nodules of the dry cement are going away, this would be a good time to go ahead and add the Micron 3. And uh, Micron 3. Now you'd think that powder, adding that extra powder would make that drier. But the Micron 3, because it's a very small particle, acts like ball bearings in the cement, it actually makes the cement wetter. So now we're, we're approaching getting it close to its soupiest point. And once we see it get to a certain point that we like, where it looks creamy and all the, no the dry nodules have gone away, that's when the best time is to add the fibers. It's looking really good right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and add a tiny bit of water just to help uh, those nodules disappear. Now it's a very soupy mix right now, so we're not going to have to add any more water to this. These are the PVA REC 15 fibers, tell they're little short fibers mixed in, they're kind of platey looking, but uh, one and a half compacted quarts. to there. And then we use the uh, port of ferro fibers, which are three-quarter inch and they're kind of got a twist in them. Very strong fibers. About up to there, so you get the idea of the relationship. A little bit more of the white fibers in the gray. Now we're going to do the uh, foam. Uh, well here we got about 40 ounces of water, about up to there. And we're going to add the, we'll come around over here where it's a little more quiet. This is the Merle Cell, uh, the foaming agent. It's always a really good idea just to carefully measure exactly one ounce of water. I mean one ounce of this. That was a bartender, so that was exact. And this is our aerating device. A little bit of a window screen rolled up. This, uh, we just made this this morning. It's not quite broke in. It tends to slosh it out a little bit. But it works. And you can start to kind of see a little bit of rainbow iridescence in it in the sun. You know, it's got a pretty lot, a lot of small bubbles. And uh, it'll do its magic. But we have gotten away with just putting the dilute in the mix and just waiting and it, it could almost foam on its own.
doesn't have a lot of friction because of the aeration. This is how you tell when it's a good plaster is by the weight. It's kind of a measure of the resistance. Here we have it, a full wheelbarrow, or about three cubic feet of material. In one bag, 